reactive training systems. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to the RTF Podcast. I'm Mike Tushir. I've got Adam Palmer, uh, Matt Gary, and Paul Simon on the line with me today. And we're here hanging out. We're going to talk about uh, the upcoming uh, USA Powerlifting Raw Nationals meet. Uh, if you haven't heard, then you must not be plugged into the powerlifting scene very much because it's the largest meet in U.S. history. I'm pretty sure it's the largest meet it's the largest meet I've ever heard of. Uh, there's going to be 1,147 lifters there. Um, that's right, isn't it? That's the biggest meet ever. It's there's been one. Someone else posted one uh, in on Facebook and said that it was like a, a European meet. It had like 1,700 lifters. I think it was like in Poland or something. But uh, really? that was yeah. I I had no idea that that existed. But that's a thing apparently. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, uh, biggest meet in U.S. history, Festival. for for sure. Um, yeah, I, I have not heard of, uh, of any other meets. It's definitely one of the biggest meets uh, ever. So there's that. It's going to be um, it's going to be four days long, um, four platforms, four days, right? Um, Holly uh, and Matt, you guys are a lot more familiar with like the logistics piece of the competition than I am. Um, can you kind of give me like the overview? It's like uh, three sessions. Is it two sessions a day or three sessions most days? It's it's going to be um, most most days are two sessions, and there's one day that's going to be three sessions. So uh, I believe Friday will be three sessions where we're starting with the 83 kilo men in the first session. Then we're going to 63 kilo women in the second session, and then 72 kilo women in the last session. Well, that's so pretty it's, good. It's, I mean, usually the bigger meets that I've seen, you know, they end up running through the night, really. Uh, but it doesn't sound like this one is, is organized uh, to be that, you know. So that's nice. That's going to be beneficial, I think, for the lifters. Well, you say that now. Let's let's see what Murphy's happens. law always applies. <laughs> well, I do uh, have a tendency of being a bit optimistic on on things, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty psyched about this. This is going to be a really fun meet. Um, we like that it's a big meet, you know. And we say we like that it's a big meet. It was a big meet before when it had like three or four hundred lifters in it. Uh, so now we're like three or four times the size of what it's been in the past. So. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what it's like when we all get there, you know. But I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a, lot, it should be a lot of fun. And and just for some quick perspective, just going back three years, 2012 there were 242 lifters, 2013, 361 lifters, 2014, 445 lifters. This year. Right now, there are 1,147 entries. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I, I would say we've hit the tipping point, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, where can we go from there? Right, yeah. Um, if, if I might add, um, I think that's a function of a lot of things, and, and not um, not just, in, you know, everybody's knee-jerk reaction is it's because of the low qualifying totals, and that's that's only one reason, but I think, I think the date works out this year a lot better for a lot of people it's um you know the, the, so the, the the date is conducive to a lot of people attending uh, the location of course pennsylvania being a hotbed for powerlifting and kind of the birthplace of the sport um the fact that we've got a home game ipf raw worlds coming in 2016 in Colleen, texas that is attracting a ton of people who now want an opportunity to try to qualify for our u.s national teams um just the overall explosion in popularity of raw lifting. Um, I think social media is huge, obviously. I mean, that has a ton uh, uh, to do with it. And the fact that there, there hasn't been a cap placed on the entries. I mean, I was just writing some notes. I mean, that's seven different reasons why I think we have, you know, such a gigantic meet. So it's just not necessarily the low QTs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there have been 
low. It's not like the qualifying totals were lowered, and and that's responsible for the the growth of meat. You know, uh, right. in fact, we didn't have qualifying totals, and we just implemented them. And you know, this meat is three or four times bigger than it's been in the past. So I don't think that's you know a logical reason why. Now, uh, it's a different discussion, and maybe we should get into that now. Um, you know, kind of what's what's the plan in the future? Like, yeah, okay, it's cool that uh, things have grown to this point, you know, but it's also making a lot of people nervous, and rightfully so, that there's a, a lot going on and there's a lot logistically that goes into a meat that's this big, you know. So what are our plans for the future? Um, what are the plans as far as, you know, maybe bringing the size down a little bit? It's fine if it's a big meat, but uh, this is maybe... It's big enough to make people nervous and uh, kind of wonder uh, about how how is this going to go. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, there's there's a process for all of this. There's a process for determining a lot of these issues, and it's it's actually a democratic process. Um, and there's a raw committee meeting, so there's a committee that helps determine a lot of the direction of. Um, of raw nationals, and th- so before each raw nationals, there's a um, there's a committee meeting, and there's the raw committee meeting is going to take place um, the Wednesday night before the uh, the meet, Wednesday night, October fourteenth, at seven p.m. And the meeting is open to all members of USA Powerlifting. You you have to have a current um, proof of your current USAPO membership to vote, but you can actually help vote. On, you can vote on the um, on on different issues and help kind of shape the future. So there's a lot of people that have been complaining about the meat size and so on and so forth and qualifying totals. Well, show up and vote. You know, put your money where your mouth is. Show up, put put a good word in, and um, you know, help help kind of shape things the way that you want to see them in the um, in the future. Uh, right, definitely. And you said that's. Uh Wednesday night before uh, the competition starts, right? Yes, yes. At the at the um, at the hotel at the Hilton, um, Wednesday, October fourteenth at seven p.m. Awesome. Um, yeah, Matt, what do you have to say about? <laughs> about yeah, I, um, this stuff? I mean everything. Everything you said, Paulie, is is spot on. I mean, I have not a whole lot to add other than um, just I'm a member of the Royal Committee and and we've been uh, discussing this and, and we've done our due diligence and we're going to discuss, uh, you know, um, a proposed uh, classification system and obviously uh, increasing the qualifying totals. Um, we want to help legitimize um, and make this a true Raw National Championships. So that's not to make it so exclusive that, you know, you only have a few people attending, um, but we do want it to mean something, you know, um, than just more than having a pulse. You know, you should you should actually have to, to put forth some effort to qualify. Um, and so that's one of the things that's going to be discussed. Um, we'll also be making announcements for our uh, raw national team coaches for the next coaching term, which is 2016 to 2018. So uh, we know who those people are, but we're excited to, to release that information at the meeting. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, we're just going to be, you know, talking about a way ahead. And like Paulie said, if you want to come um, engage in that discussion, you know, um, please, we, we encourage and invite and welcome your attendance. Yeah. So it, it's not a simple thing. Like, I mean, like, like you said, Matt, you're on the Raw Committee. And, and Paulie, I know that you're involved in this as well. And, and I think a lot of people get caught up in, like, I just need to raise the qualifying total. Well, it's, I don't think it's quite so simple because you have this thing, you know, and it's obviously, well, we've obviously reached a tipping point now, but, you know, up to now it was growing, 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 and now it's just kind of blown up. And to me, it's like, okay, you've got this thing and it's growing, and, yeah, you want to you wanna prune it a bit and shape it, but you don't want to kill it, you know. And right. if you came out with some, you know, ridiculous qualifying totals or even it, – it didn't even have to be ridiculous. It would have been something that everybody thought was a good idea, but if it turned out it was, you know, the qualifying totals were a bit too high, you know, and now, you know, you maybe prune things too much, you know. 
So I can appreciate that it's it's something that you want to put some thought into, and it's not uh, it's not a decision that uh, anybody wants to take lightly. And you know, I'll just kind of echo what Polly was saying. Like, uh, if you got a meaningful input or you've got an idea or something, then you need to be involved uh, in the process. And there's definitely a way to do that. It's not, you know, some people at the top that make all the decisions. Uh, do you guys, are, are you able to, to talk about any of the proposals or anything like that? I've heard a few different ideas uh, out there. Uh, is that something you guys want to talk about? Um, no. I would personally rather not divulge a lot of the details. Um, they're going to be coming available soon anyway. Um, but uh, uh, I will say this, that we've done our uh, extensive research and, and data analysis and, and been crunching a lot of numbers from the results of, of every raw nationals that we've had and other raw meets as well. And we've, we've used the new USAPL database, which has been a fantastic resource and, and employed the, the, the uh, some of the, the uh, brighter minds, if you will, in the USAPL to help crunch some of the numbers. So, I mean, we didn't just throw this together. We we gave this quite a bit of thought. So, um, yeah, anyway. Well, let me ask you this then, uh, just sure. uh, by way of, uh, I don't know, taking things out of the official court a little bit. Um, <laughs> what if you If you were king for a day, uh, what would be a good number of lifters to have at at a national meet? Adam, let's well, start with you. Let's start with Adam. <laughs> what would be a good number to have in a raw nationals meet? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I it doesn't have think, to be based on anything. Like, I, I don't know. You know, I was, I was at nationals last year. I actually competed, and I thought the number of lifters at the meet was, it was a big meet. But it wasn't. I don't feel like it was so excessive, and I don't feel like the sessions lasted so long that it was unbearable. So I mean, I would say limit to f upper threes, maybe four, three hundred fifty lifters at the most, maybe. I'm I'm right around there myself. You know, I've done a number of meets that are around that size. They're big meets. Uh, I mean, it's definitely not something that you put on on a whim. You know. Uh, and there's definitely some production involved with it, but, you know, our national meet directors can handle that. Um, it's fun, and there's an, actually an audience as well, so it's it's nice when you're a lifter, you know, that there are, are other people around and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, for me, I would put my number right about the same level. Well, so how big are the IPF world meets? You know, that's, that's one way to kind of measuring stick, I think, right? How big is, how big is the world championships? One platform generally. <laughs> well, it's, it's it's going it's going in the opposite. So one of the, one of the issues that so four hundred people tends to work out well for a two platform four day meet. And what's nice about that is that people can actually watch the lifting. Mm -hmm. Think about how you're going to be able to well, how you're going to be able to position yourself to watch the lifter that you want to lift when literally four lifts are going on at the same time. So right. each platform is going to be its own entity. So they're not going to go in order. It's not going to be one person lifting on platform A and then the next person lifting on platform B. You know, the meet directors are the meet director and and all of the staff are going to try to run everybody through as quickly and as as efficiently as possible. So that means that they can't pay attention to what the what's going on on the other platforms. So that can be distracting to somebody who's trying to keep track or trying to figure out who they want to watch and who they want to track and so on and so forth. But Generally speaking, the the um, international meets are are one platform. Um, last year, Classic Worlds had two platforms for um, for a couple of sessions, and even that kind of threw a wrench into a lot of people's yeah. uh, planning, if you will, um, just because then, then then there you're split. But you think about you know as a national event, you want the spotlight to be on you. Everybody wants their moment to shine. And so this will be diluted a little bit, but I, I don't think any less um, any less fun. It's just going to be a different exercise just to see how everybody actually pulls it off. And I know firsthand from talking to the meet director, talking to um, technical secretaries, talking to a lot of the people that are coordinating it, that these guys are working their butts off to make this happen. So for everybody that's complaining about it, 
let's see what happens. You know, people are anticipating the worst, and and you know, I think as as you said before, Mike, I'm 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 optimistic. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm I understand the mentality of going to one platform at an international level. You know, I think if you had a a big two platform meet at a national level, uh, that would be a lot of fun, uh, and then. I don't know. It's funny because if you rewind time, you know, a year or so, you know, a 300, 400 lifter meet sounds huge, you know, but I I think uh, the turnout for this year's raw nationals has kind of changed the perspective. It's certainly changed my perspective. Um, So yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of what my thoughts are. Yeah. And just where to go. And just, just one comment. Um, It's also a little bit deceiving because currently in the IPF, um, you know, obviously we have two formats in lifting, the equipped and then the raw classic. And the equipped meets are all separated by age groups. So we have the open worlds, the masters worlds, the sub-junior and junior worlds. Well, they haven't done that for raw yet. So right. you know, we just have one classic world championships for raw lifting. And so that's a little bit deceiving when I guess last year in Finland, what were there, maybe 700 lifters total or something yeah. between seven and 800. So if we add up the totals of all the other equip meets, I'm sure it's comparable. You also had a full three days or three additional days to spread yeah. that out over too. Yeah. Exactly. So it's a little bit deceiving. Well, um, yeah. So that's uh, quite a bit about the meat. Um, it, it, who are you guys most looking forward to watching lift? Let me put it that way. <laughs> Jesse Norris. Adam, He's my, Adam, I knew I, you were going to say that. <laughs> you, know, you knew, you knew it because I, I, I'm a huge fan. Um, I mean, the the dude is super humble. He is arguably the best raw lifter, uh, one of the best raw lifters living right now, um, in in competing. Uh, I mean, the dude's going to total over two thousand, like as a ninety three lifter, hands down. <laughs> He's uh he certainly put up some big numbers uh, so far. I've I, I've never met him first of all, and um, I was wondering if he would if he would sign up, uh, but clearly he's he's signed up and on his way. I'm I'm looking forward to watching him lift as well. I mean I don't know how you can like strength and like strong people and not look forward to watching somebody like that lift weights, um, but you know. The 93 class has been a stacked class for a while now. And, you know, this is no different. It it looks like, based on qualifying totals anyway, uh, it looks like Jesse's, you know, out in front. But there's a lot of other people in that class that are really strong people and uh, can do some really impressive stuff. Um, That's always a fun class to watch. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. Um, I mean... So, I mean, there's Jesse, obviously, but then you look at every single class that we've got here, even on the women's side, and there's there's some clear front runners, and then there's some some pretty close competitions across all the weight classes. Um, yeah. I'm actually looking forward to seeing the, uh, the super heavy women. Um, I know Becky Holcomb has come up pretty significantly in the last few months. I know her squad is... I don't know if she's going to catch Benika Lau, but um, but I know and I, I know there's that's going to be a pretty close uh, matchup. I, I have a feeling that that's going to be closer than most people think. There's a there's quite a few close matchups, um, and I mean I, I know that for a lot of these people we know them, and you know you don't want to put too much of their business out there and stuff like that, you know. So um, yeah, I, I mean I, for my, for me anyway. I don't want to call anybody's numbers, you know, in, in this kind of <laughs> format, but there's a lot of stuff that a lot of people that are going to be uh, impressive to watch. I want to see uh, Jen Thompson, of course, lift again. She's always a lot of fun to watch. Kim Walford is always, uh, it, it's always fun to watch the people that, uh, you know, that kind of bring that upper level of intensity. It's one of the reasons why um, everybody likes to watch uh, Nico Huslander whenever he's lifting too, you know, mm-hmm. it, um, so yeah, it's uh, that's fun to watch. Now, Polly, I know that you, first of all, you I know that you're coaching uh, a lot of Team RTF lifters uh, throughout the whole four days. Um, 
you may not get to watch <laughs> as much as you'd like. Um, what's kind of, what are you thinking in terms of uh, handling that many people at a competition like this? Well, thankfully they're not all in one session, so <laughs> we'll, be, yeah. we'll be able to we'll be able to spread them out, and um, and I'll be I'll be I'll be handling them with um, with Becca, and and it's it's actually not too bad. I think we've got about at most maybe three or four people in each session. My biggest concern is if someone's on platform A and someone's on platform D at the same time. So navigating the room, being able to you know get from one to the other to watch lifts, um, to watch the specific lifters lift so that we can kind of put in the proper um, proper attempts. And now, you know, as, as we, we do our we do our homework with prepping everybody for their attempts. Um, and I, I think I've mentioned this before actually on another podcast where we try to make sure that it's it's the lifters are as autonomous as po- as as they can be and we try to prepare for most um, we most 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 things that could possibly arise. It's 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 going to be it's going to be hard to tell until we get there. Until I get there on Wednesday and I start to walk the um, walk the room, start to see. You know, we won't know until the flights are up. There's a lot of variables for us as coaches um, going into going into a meet. And you know, so just going back to something that you had mentioned, Mike, with some of these matchups, you look at some of the qualifying totals. And those don't; those only tell a very small part of the story. You never yeah. know if someone's not feeling well, if, if someone, uh, you know, if, if their coaches make poor selections, if they make poor selections, if they miss a lift, and you know, I know that Matt, that's your um, <laughs> that's your area of expertise <laughs> as far as um, you, got, you got that right. <laughs> yeah, attempt selection and and prep and everything else. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, Look, I'm going to have fun as a coach. I'm going to have a lot of fun as a coach, and and, and the 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 weekend, if you will, a long weekend, is going to go <laughs> by very quickly. And yeah. you know, I know I'll be tired on Monday, but I know I'll be happy with whatever. <laughs> as, long as, as long as I know that you know everybody put in their best and they did their best, and you know they, it's right. just, it's it's all you can ask for, right? Really. Um, one of the things I've, I I was going to make a T-shirt and probably wear it. But I probably won't have time. But just basically, a T-shirt that says it's too late, <laughs> and, and meaning that it's too late to get strong. It's too late to do it. It's like just stay with the game. Yeah. Um, you just run your plan, and and that's all you can do at that point. You take what's yeah, there. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And 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 relax and have fun. I know everybody gets wound up, and that's that's human nature. But yeah. uh, you know, relax and let your coach take care of you. Right. If if it's possible. Uh, what, what do you think about that, Matt? Oh, I, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I mean, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, you know, the fact that we have a lot of people, you know, you can use the adage that a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, so I'm, I'm thrilled. I, I mean, I look at it as a coach and handling so many lifters, I'll probably have close to 20 total spread out over the weekend. As you said, fortunately, not too many all in one session. But um, I just, you know, I look at it as an incredible opportunity because I've probably got, realistically, out of the 20, probably six that have a shot or are going to be in contention for either medals or, you know, um, the actual national championship. So, I mean, that's, you know, I'm super excited. And, you know, kind of like Mike said, we, we like to play our cards close to the vest and not talk in terms of what we plan to do. And, you know, that's why you're not going to hear us um, shouting out any specific numbers or anything. I know that's what the listeners probably want to hear, but they, they shouldn't hold their breath. So yeah, this, um, is very, uh, this is turning um, out to be a very anticlimactic uh, <laughs> show. No, I, 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 I think, I mean, I think I, it's the, the opposite, Adam. I mean, it's, it's, basically, <laughs> it's basically wait and see. Just wait yeah, and yeah. see what, what, we can, what we can deliver. And, so, and you know... Yeah. So in that case, let's we, we do need to say at least who we think we should be you should be watching out for. Um, for example, um, in the 74 kg men, notice that Johnny Candido is now competing as a uh, as a 74 lifter and not as an 83. Which, yep. uh, if you've been following any YouTube or social media, he he made that announcement a while back that he was cutting to 74, mm-hmm. and we all know that he's totaled over 1500. Um, but it will be interesting to see 
what he's able to do at this new body weight. Um, Jamie McDougall is kind of the clear front runner along with Taylor Atwood in that weight class. And uh, those two guys, I think, um, stand a chance to, to run away and battle it out for first. Um, but, and, and, you know, with Johnny's qualifying total, he had kind of a last minute entry. He, uh, only is coming in with a 1345. And like you were saying, Polly, that only tells a, you know, a small port part of the story. You know, he was battling an injury, you know, as uh, at IPF worlds, he dropped that dead, last deadlift on his foot. Um, so the, just that, those kinds of things, I guess. So we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Um, well, I mean, that's the interesting thing about powerlifting in general, right? Is that, um, you know, who is like a, at what general strength level, like, and especially in this age where everybody's pretty open about training and everybody's posting videos and stuff on various social media, it's not hard to figure out uh, where people are at strength Uh The thing is, it's about who can put that performance together uh, on the day. And something else that you'll find is that a lot of lifters, it, it's funny to see the differences in personality, right? As the meat gets closer, um, and, and I mean, I've, I've done lots of, physiological testing and stuff over the years. And it's funny to see that as the meat gets closer, a lifter's stress level goes up. Right. And I mean, that, that much seems obvious, but I mean, I'm talking even a couple weeks out, you can start to see that pressure, you know, and different lifters are going to respond to that differently. You know, um, some people respond to it by kind of retreating into themselves a little bit, you know, and, and other people respond the opposite way. You know, so there's lots of things that happen. You know, they're, all these people are lifters, yeah, but they're also people, and they have real stuff that happens to them in their life. Uh, you know, some things for better and some things for worse. And, um, yeah, so it's – we can speculate and we can look at qualifying totals and stuff like that, but um, how it actually pans out, like when we actually get there and show up um, – it can be surprising, which is why we actually do the meet and don't just look at nominations, right? Matt, I know that's uh, something that, that's kind of a favorite topic of yours whenever we're uh, preparing to go to an international meet and, and uh, there's all this concern or, or hype or whatever whenever the nominations come out. And uh, that's something that you've always reminded the teams that I've been on. Uh, like, look, nominations are just nominations. That's not necessarily what anybody's going to lift. They could you know, they could be right on that nomination or significantly above it or below it. So just take it for what it is, uh, just a nomination. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, I mean, you know, one of the things you're talking about, pressure and stress and all that sort of thing, I mean, the expectation that Susie and I create and the one that we set for all of our lifters, regardless of level, is that they're going to execute at their very best. And so w what that means is them making all of their attempts because that's the expectation, and they're going to do so to an irrefutable standard that's in compliance with every rule. So, you know, so there's people out there who are listening who probably think, well, wow, that puts a bunch of unnecessary pressure on, on Matt's lifters, and, and my response is, is that, it, you know, it, it cuts both ways. We're a team, and we have supreme trust in one another, and so, and that mutual respect and belief system instills confidence, because my lifters are confident that I'm going to put the right weight on the bar that I'm going to have them well-prepared, warmed up in a timely fashion. And much the same way, I've got confidence that they're going to execute at their highest level, which means making their attempts. And, you know, the bottom line is, is that I'm going to put the right number on the bar, and they're going to lift whatever I put on the bar. And that's not about being cocky or overconfident or anything like that. It's just we have just an amazing amount of conviction in our, in our process and the things that we can control, and that's exactly what we can control. So... You know, like Pauly said, you know, there's been a lot of talk about logistics, and, you know, that talk creates a lot of anxiety for people, but to me it's noise because the lifters that we face, the location of the meet, the size of the venue, and the schedule are far less important variables than the things that we can control. So, and, and that's where we choose to place all of our focus. Yes, if you are things that we can control. So. If you lift the most that you can lift on that particular day, then that's all you can do, and you're going to play the highest you're going to play. Yep, that's right. And there's a lot to be said 
like you said, I mean, you can follow social media, you can look at the qualifying totals and the rankings, if you will, out there, but there's a lot to be said for making most, if not all, of your attempts and not making any mistakes. And yeah. so, you know. Yeah. I guess we're all, all too bought into the sport to be speculators. <laughs> <laughs> You're it, 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 pushing it, it, for that speculation, Adam, aren't I, you? <laughs> I am, because it's entertaining. It, it is. And, and part of the show, the reason we do the show is is, is entertaining, you know. Um, well, I, 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 you know, it's funny. I think I think on this in this show, we're, we're kind of a little more on the informative side because we, we've we got... Are. And which is, information is entertaining too, Adam. <laughs> I, I agree. I'm not denying that. I'm, I'm not arguing with you there. <laughs> Well, Adam, um, I mean, aside from, like you mentioned, uh, wanting, to, wanting to watch Jesse, is there a particular matchup that, oh, man. that is a lot of something them. that, like, so, so unfortunately, you're not able to uh, come this year as a competitor, um, but you're coming this year for photography, right? Yep, I am. So I've you're going to be right working now. a lot doing that. Is there a particular matchup that you're like, man, I don't want to miss this? Honestly, there's probably about four or five of them. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and the first one is the one that on, is on a day that I'm going to miss, and that's the one with uh, Marissa Inda and Susie Gary. <laughs> that is going to be a, a really uh, awesome event to watch. I wish I could be there to see that. I um, I want to watch that one as well. So that's and if I was a, if I was a betting man, I'd put money on Susie. So <laughs> uh, now you can tell her I uh, I've got money down for her. <laughs> I, uh, I, pre- I appreciate that. Yesterday was her birthday. She'll be awesome. happy to re- receive that present. <laughs> is there uh, awesome. is some so people are keeping books on this? That's uh, official notification. Adam Adam's keeping books on this. Uh, place all your pounds and bets with Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, I, I want to see that one as well. Uh, and and I mean, I'm right there with you, Adam. There's a lot of matchups that that I yeah. see, and we're kind of running out of time now. Which is, it's like, man, there's just so much to talk about with a meet this size. You know, with uh, this many quality competitors that are going to be there. You know, I mean, that's one matchup. There's a ton of other matchups that are going to be fun to watch. Uh, just quality lifting. You know entertaining lifters to watch, uh, close competitions to watch. Uh, it's going to be, going to be really cool. Yes. Um, another, there's two more that I want to, I want to mention, uh, <laughs> the hundred, I know the 120 kilo class. I know Mike, you're, you've been avoiding this conversation, but, uh, um, Dennis Cornelius is a very formidable, uh, uh, lifter i mean the guys the guys totaled over 2100 i know mike you've totaled over 2100 i really want to watch that that is going to be a battle i'm super stoked to to be able to witness that um the 105 kilo class nick tyluki has traditionally run away with this one and this year i don't think that's going to be the case because to me just based on entries and what i've seen on youtube uh Garrett Blevins, to me, looks to be the clear front runner there. Um, so there's, there's, I mean, there's a couple other ones though. Those, so hey, like I said, if you're if you're a betting man, uh, those I want to put money on. Uh, I'll put money down on Mike Mike Tushier to win the 120 class and uh, and uh, Garrett Blevins to win the 105s. Well, you're on my show. You have to bet for me. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So uh, if, if anybody's listening to this, waiting for those uh, predictions, what do they call those? Uh, when I don't know, like you see them in uh, in basketball and, and other sports like that, when, like the the reports that, come out, the preseason reports, like hey, this is the team to watch and stuff like that. You're talking about like the betting lines or the. Uh, uh, well, uh, Adam can make betting lines too. Uh, that'll be in the, yeah. the show notes after we're done here. <laughs> The play, play, play time or whatever, right. pre, uh, pre-game action. Or right. Whatever. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, there's going to be it, it'll be a lot of a lot of cool stuff, and we should um, we should get together again after uh, after a competition's over and talk about how it went. Yeah, that's right, Adam. You're going to have to do your payouts. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have, to, <laughs> have to own up to some of those predictions, maybe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
I just want to. I just want. I just want to add one piece, if I can. Um, all of these matchups that, that Adam has mentioned, and obviously the ones that we didn't get to. Um, I'll just say this, and this is what's going to be so fun, probably for myself and for Paulie and anybody else out there who's coaching, is that coaching at a meet of this magnitude matters. It is a big deal, and so um, a lot of these people who might be coming in um, and are going to throw their hat in the ring without a coach. I don't recommend that. So it's it's good to have somebody in your corner who can think objectively when uh, the adrenaline's pumping. So totally agree. Yeah, someone someone and, who's done this before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For anybody who's who's going to be watching, you know, whether you're lifting or not, you're going to be sitting there watching some sessions. Keep an eye on those uh, those other placements as well, because a lot of times those are fun matchups and battles to watch too. You know, when somebody's, you know, pulling a third deadlift to move from, you know, fifth place to fourth place or something like that, you know, it's fun to watch, especially when we get into the deadlifts, how some of that strategy plays out. Um, there's not a whole lot of strategy to be had in squats and bench, maybe a little bit, you know, in terms of making attempts, but uh, it shows up more in the deadlift. And if you, if you're watching the scoreboard and paying attention uh, it can be pretty exciting. Um, and, and just a quick point of information for that. Um, on your third deadlift, you're allowed two changes. So that's where people can put in for a third deadlift and they can bluff. They can. Right. There's a lot of things that can happen. They can watch who's going ahead or, or try to ch- change position on the deadlift. So that's that's where the strategy, a lot of the powerlifting strategy comes in in a three-lift meet right. um, with with the deadlift. So that's that's what Mike's talking about. Yeah. So, um, we're, uh, we're, like I said before, we could talk about this for longer than we have time, uh, but that's about all the time that we've got. Before we do wrap up, I just want to mention again that um, Polly, Adam, myself, uh, Jake Noel, and uh, Mark Robb, and Becca will all be at uh, the South Brooklyn Weightlifting Club, Polly's Gym, uh, November 13th through the 15th. Uh, we're going to be having the RTS seminar there. It's going to be a really fun event. Uh, they always are. Uh, this one's going to be different from how we've done seminars in the past. Uh, we're going to teach using a lot of examples. Uh, you're going to get a stack of training programs uh, just when you show up on the first day, and we're going to use those to teach about programming. Uh, we're going to teach about GPP and correctives. We talked to Jake uh, in the last show, uh, so if you haven't listened to that, give that a listen and It'll give you a little preview of, of what Jake's about and the kind of information that he's going to be bringing to the seminar. But then on Sunday, that's our VIP day, and it's limited to only 15 lifters. Uh, so we're going to split you into groups of no more than three lifters. So it'll be one coach for three lifters at a maximum. And uh, you'll go through uh, various stations. We'll have a station on programming, station on correctives, station for each of the three power lifts. The whole goal of the VIP day is so that you walk away, you've got a training program that takes you through the next five or six months that's customized to fit you. Uh, You'll be working with me directly on that. Uh, You'll have a correctives plan uh, based on an assessment of what your highest risk areas are and how to make sure that you stay injury free. Uh, You'll have technical analysis on all of your power lifts, weak range of motion analysis on all your power lifts. So basically, the whole goal of the VIP day is that you walk away with all the information that you're going to need uh, to make progress and set new PRs in the next six months. Uh, so, I mean, just kind of do the math on that and, and figure out the value of what you're getting. I mean, that's going to be a really, really cool thing. Um, both options really are going to be, uh, I feel like we're really pushing a tremendous amount of value into this one weekend. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, if you go to the RTS uh, website, reactivetrainingsystems.com, and look at the shopping cart in the custom solutions section, that's where you can get tickets. And we'll put up a link to that as well. Um, but, yeah, so that's coming up, um, Brooklyn, November 13th through the 15th. Um, before we close up, any last last comments regarding Raw Nationals? Anything, guys? I think that pretty much... No, I'm just uh, looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah. We'll be running around like crazy. <laughs> I think all of us are going to be pretty busy the whole, the whole time there, but looking forward to it. Uh, if you guys see any of us, uh, 
while you're there, uh, feel free to stop us, say hi, introduce yourself. Uh, we'd love to meet you. So uh, that's about all we've got for this week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll see you next time.